distinguish between vaccinated and, va and non-vaccinated, and that would be all down to uh, the government's guidelines on social distancing and whether they will change <clears throat> for vaccinated people versus non-vaccinated people. It's two minutes past three. News Talk Weather. Thanks to the AA. For our most competitive discounts on car insurance, go online to the AA.ie. Windy with scattered rain and drizzle, some sunny spells where there's a break in the cloud. Top temperatures of 13 to 16 degrees. Now you're up to date on News Talk. Football on Off The Ball With Paddy Power Ready for your next big move? The trip from the fridge to the couch Gamble responsibly Gamblingcare.ie now, you're very welcome back. So uh, we're talking Republic of Ireland, nil Luxembourg won. There is a list in Irish football, as we said earlier, you don't want to be on it. And it has things like Cyprus 06, Liechtenstein 95, Macedonia 97. We are now adding Luxembourg in Dublin 2021 to that list. Bad night for all concerned. Uh, Seamus Coleman said he was embarrassed. Uh, the FAI chairman, Roy Barrett, has been speaking in the past while on Stephen Kenny, uh, not because of the result last night there's already a planned FAI EGM on today but Stephen Kenny uh, naturally came up so he said I've got a lot of confidence and respect in Stephen and the team what they're trying to achieve uh, last night was a setback that's all it is I've healthy respect for what they're trying to achieve and how they're going about it and then Roy Barrett went on to say one game isn't going to throw everything up in the air and it shouldn't uh, there's no doubt this has been a difficult year for Steve and his team and uh, the team itself and everything that's been thrown at them. My observation is that they've shown huge enthusiasm, a lot of professionalism, uh, very resilient and they're pretty committed and have a lot of conviction in what they're trying to achieve and I support them on that. So that's FAI Chairman Roy Barrett speaking in the past hour or so. Here's a short clip of Stephen Kenny at his press conference last night. We're very disappointed to lose the game. We can't get away from that. Like, there's no point in hiding from that. You know, I think that's that's obvious. I think, uh, listen, the players' morale was good going into the game. Their attitude was good. Uh, I think uh, they were determined to get a result. It wasn't a, a complacency. We knew that Luxembourg had pushed Ukraine tight last year in one nil, and Ukraine had won that group with Portugal and Serbia three two. We knew that they had done well and had taken points in the, a lot of points in the Nations League. So we weren't complacent in any way. But it ended up being a, a pretty even match, um, which is disappointing. Obviously, we would more to play, but, you know, we we missed it. James, obviously, we thought James had scored. It would have been an outstanding goal, team goal, um, in the first half. But we didn't create enough, to be honest, in that period. And, um, you know, so so we're we're quite disappointed with that, you know, very disappointed to say the least. You said in your program notes about again after the defeat in Belgrade, you know, becoming that more progressive footballing nation. Do you think you're getting that point across to the players? Listen, we, we played really well in Serbia and I was it was an exceptional display. Uh, we probably deserve to come out with a point, but but we matched, matched them over the 90 minutes uh, in terms of the way we played. But today was certainly a step back. I think um, what it showed me today is that I'm, I'm not making excuses at all. I'm just, it showed me that some players, a lot of players struggle with the physical capacity of trying to play two games in three days because a lot of them are, are not playing for their clubs. And I think... Um, that, that was very evident to quite a few players um, and I think it wasn't their their psychological pre preparation or their determination actually, you know. Um, they all love playing for their country, they wanted to do better than they did. Some players struggled to get anywhere near where they did the other night. Stephen Kenny speaking there post-match last night. Very happy to say we have David Snay, journalist with us, who was in the stadium, and former Republic of Ireland international Gary Breen as well. Gary, overall reaction to last night and the performance and the result? Uh, one of huge disappointment, really. I think we built this as a must-win game. We, we sensed, that, or not sensed, but we predicted that this was an opportunity to build some confidence, to end this dismal, windless run. And unfortunately, it just went from bad to worse, really. And, and that's the frustration more than anything, because we should be able to um, deal with Luxembourg at home. That's mm. no, not being disrespectful to them, who I felt played very well on the, on the, on the, in, in the game on the evening. I thought they were organised. But I think when you come up against teams, 
who are organised and, and having a good showing, then it's up to you to really enforce what you want them to do, what, what you want to do to them and make it very difficult. And I feel as well as we started against uh, Bure in terms of our shape, I, I just didn't think we did that against Luxembourg. But the frustration for me ultimately was at times, certainly in that opening period, how often we gave the ball away and you lose any type of momentum mm. there. And even the fact, Joe, like central midfielders, Knight and Cullen. Now, the, the, biggest, the biggest thing for a centre midfielder is never to be robbed from behind. It, it, it's the one thing you can never happen to you that you get stolen the ball off you from behind. And it happened to our two centre midfielders in the opening five minutes. And you just think, oh, this is a bad start, lads. Then Brown as well, a couple of minutes later, gives, kicks the ball out of play. And you're thinking, yeah. this is not the start we wanted. And that was the frustration that it just allows the opposition just to, to, to feel really comfortable mm. within their surroundings in a way that we saw in previous campaigns. I mentioned it to you before when, do you remember when Georgia came to Lansdowne and we're popping the ball around, we couldn't get near them. Yeah. And, that, and that is... That, that's the biggest frustration for me more than anything. It's funny, that point jumped out to me as much as anything. And I, we had David Myler and Kev Kilban on earlier yeah. on. And look, I just listed off a load of those moments that you've referenced as well. And yeah. the two lads said, look, they happen and they do happen. Like in isolation, each of those moments, of course, they can happen. It's just, it was throughout the night, you know, Gary, I mean, you can't implement a passing game or build any kind of rhythm or put Luxembourg on the back foot if they keep happening so often and it just seemed to be a breakdown so often last night for whatever reason either sloppiness tiredness maybe some certain players struggling to you know hit the levels they need to hit I don't know what it is yeah but listen and this is something that I touched on after the Serbia game in the fact that we started that first half so well Mm. likewise we, we started reasonably well against England but and what happens is when that, when you play against better players, they work out, okay, Ireland are doing this really well. Let's try and find space elsewhere. Let's work it. And and you've got a problem to solve within the game then. You've got to adjust. You know, we started well. They're going to change it. We've got to adjust. And the frustration for me is that for a passing team, which this team is built at, you, you, you know, you're so unopposed at times. And this is the frustration for me. I was literally... Well, I ain't got no hair at the moment, but I was literally pulling it out because Kieran Clark's on the left-hand side of a free, which ultimately you've got so much space and time there. No one's challenging you. And unopposed, we're kicking it out. Yeah. And Stephen's giving the ball away more than I've ever seen him do. And it's not just things like that, Joe, in terms of being in possession of the ball and then giving it back to the opposition just to give them a chance to have a breather, feel mm. good about themselves. Mm. But what we're really guilty of over the last couple of games, it really infuriates me is we give away so many fouls cheap fouls and it's as if like the desire to, to be um competitive and, and to be quite physical but the reality is you're just you're just giving a foul away and just letting the pressure we did it from back to front not just defenders giving away fouls in and around our box i'm not talking about that at all our midfielders get close foul suddenly then the opposition has a breather our forwards get close foul they get a breather again when they're under a bit of pressure facing their own goal. And that's something that has to be addressed. And that's something certainly that I I had to learn very quickly mm. as um, a young player playing for Ireland because you don't really experience it so much. Well, certainly back then you didn't in the Premier League because it was a very much a, a physical game. Obviously, the, the, the continental players coming over and would feel any little bit of contact, you'd run past them and they'd fall over. And you had to learn that very quickly. These players have to learn it. Yeah. David, very welcome, a warm welcome to you as well. The thing which jumped out is that whenever Ireland did put good passages of play together, and I'm not saying exceptional passages, I'm saying good passes, passages of play, mm. like they got joy, like it wasn't impossible, you know? I mean, it was still a team ranked 98th in the world, like Brown and Brady in the 70th minute put together a few passes, Cross was in, it was the overhead kick for Collins, there was the Collins chance obviously early on. You know, those moments, it didn't require rocket science either was the thing, which which made the sloppiness so frustrating. Yeah, exactly. And it was like, there was a point, obviously, that chance where Orlin did play, it was very simple football and seemed to just cut Luxembourg open and James Collins missed that chance. It was a, it was a very good save, but it did actually seem at that point, it was like, well, there you go. That, this, is, this is how easily they could be got at. And there was a period in that first half around maybe... 25, 35 minutes where Ireland looked as if they were putting a bit of pressure on. They just couldn't really, other than that Collins chance, they just couldn't really create anything. And then it just seemed to be Luxembourg, as Gary was saying there, were about good teams realising what they have to do. Luxembourg kind of just realised, well, actually, yeah, this isn't this isn't actually too bad. We can we weathered the storm here a little bit. Ireland ran out of steam a little bit, and it just kind of felt, I don't know if it was a case of panicking or just having a total lack of confidence then, but. 
all the other chances in the second half were really were really half chances and Luxembourg were the team even though they gave up possession Luxembourg were the team who were comfortable and mm. I know I've seen it because it was a late goal it kind of make, it makes it all it makes it all the worse but I don't think anyone could really argue with, with what happens because Luxembourg's game plan walked the street and the frustra- really frustrating thing was they just weathered that storm and just copped on really how, how Ireland were playing and, and how easy it was and it's just Ireland didn't, they just didn't have anything else in them in, on that day. And the fact that Stephen Kenny was interesting that Stephen made that point about the, the physicality of it or just players not capable because speaking to other people then around the place, that sense wasn't there leading into the game. There was a real strong sense of morale around the group after the, the Serbia game, even though it was a, it was a defeat just in how they played. And like the mood was good. Training by all accounts was good. Like, there, that, there didn't seem to be that sense around the camp that th- th- this was coming and it, mm. It was hitting like a bit of a ball from the blue, but it was like Gary was known from the, the tackle point of interview, but you kind of saw in a pattern of how it was going to be after five, ten minutes, and that's the kind of the, a bit of an annoying thing, you know? Yeah. Ireland didn't get better as it went on, Gary. You know, David's talking about Luxembourg yeah. weathering no, the storm and Luxembourg almost realising actually yeah. there's not such a big gulf here. We, 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 we keep going here, there might be something in this for us, and... Ireland didn't respond. I mean, by the end, it was totally disjointed that McLean and Alan Brown wing backs, Shane Long, yeah. you know, running around a bit like, geez, it wasn't like that was yeah. a horrific last 10 minutes for Luxembourg. No, and, and, and my notes just looking at the game there, Joe, as David said there, I've got here 68 minutes. I've, written, I've just, I've wrote Luxembourg are sensing the win and they went after the win. I felt they did. I think they yeah. generally felt going to do that. And I, and I agree with you there in terms of you can make tactical decisions where you, you, you think you can really impact on the game and, and challenge later on. But I, I, for the life of me, I couldn't understand why play Alan Brown at right wing back. You know, if you think about Alan Brown, all his strengths is attacking the box from deep. And, and then counter that also, or add to that, the, the quality of the balls that Robbie Brady was putting in from that right hand side. And you're kind of thinking, well, listen, why don't you put him in the right wing back role? And, not, and literally say, listen, don't come back. Seamus can deal with that, mm. that side. Just stay up there. We're going to get the ball out to you and just use your wand of a left foot, which he did. I mean, some of those deliveries were just mm. incredible. And, and you know, that's, that, that's the frustration for me. And Joe, just quoting what you said there, it's not rocket science in terms of how we're trying to play. And I think at times, I think we've... I certainly felt this going into this game that I think there's, there's a chain of thought that if we don't stick with Stephen Kenny, then we've got to revert back to the hoofball or whatever people call it. We don't have to do that. This is this is the way this island team is going to go forward now. Whether or not whoever's in charge, this is, we, we won't revert to that style of football now because it's, it's it's redundant to a certain extent. And these players can play football out from the back. They didn't prove it last night, but they can do it. And, it, and I, I just feel that at times that people think, well, listen, if we don't stick with Stephen Kenny now, we've got to go back to those dark moments. I, I just don't I don't understand why it is so black and white. Mm. Mm. It, it was sorry, Joe. It, it was interesting there. Just I can't remember if it was if it was Roy Barry who said you were mentioned there about talking about how there's enthusiasm, professionalism, kind of uh, was a commitment and conviction and what in what they're what they're doing. But that's literally literally everything Seamus Coleman said wasn't there at the end again. And like Seamus Coleman's interview at the end of that game, kind of spoke volumes really for yeah. just how how angry he was. And it was actually. He's going to, I saw someone make the point he's kind of he's got that whole post match honesty down now at this stage from everything that's happened oh, at Everton. Oh, but like I know, yeah. 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 I know, yeah, if you do well we could have a career in media training after that at the end of his career. But like I just think like that I just think you know, it was really bad. It was really there was a, I can't remember what, what point it was because I actually haven't got me you know from the match, but there was a point I think it was in the second half where Colm was trying to drive forward and trying to inject just some sort of yeah. positivity and some sort of just injection of pace and a bit of urgency and you're kind of thinking that shouldn't be coming from a fella playing centre back oh well listen it, it, it can come from that to, in terms of really like dominant players but at the same time there was also an, a, an example late on where he tries this big switch of play from right hand side at centre half so he was he was guilty as well giving the ball away you know we, we yeah. can put because Seamus is such a a captain to be so proud of as a player, as a person and everything, but he was guilty of it as well. Could That's I, the frustration. Could, could I ask you about that, Gary? Because I wondered. So it jumped out to me that when Callum Robinson got the ball in a bit of space in the first half in particular, I suspect, by the way, he's one of the players Stephen Kenny's talking about when he says not fit enough because Robinson looked like a thread early on and, and wilted and maybe two games in quick succession is too much for him when he hasn't really played in the last uh, while. But that struck me as if at half time or at some stage, the point to be made, can we get the ball quicker? To Robinson, 
Can we just, get, yeah. you know, let's let's get him one on one with his man? And like it happened in Belgrade, it happened here in the first half for the Collins chance. There's joy there, and that that almost jumped out as if Coleman is thinking, "Our mid, we're not moving the ball quick enough, so I'm just going to take this into my own hands and I'm going to try and spread the play quickly." Because our midfielders, I mean, it, things slowed down, and David Myler and Kevin Colban made the point that about Cullen and Knight that. A lot of their football was in front of Luxembourg. It was getting on the ball, but, you know, very yeah. deep and very... If you're Luxembourg, it's like, lads, play there all you want. No problem. Away you go. I mean, it, you're, you're getting the passing stats up, but it's not, it's not hurting us. So I, I wonder if all of that's connected, the Coleman long ball, trying to get it to Robinson more quickly and him feeling he should just bypass midfield. Yeah, listen, I understand, I understand what, you know, your kind of, um, what you're trying to say there, but... He'll know, Seamus, that those big raking passes are, are easier to defend. And, and if you make them, you've got to commit them. And even if you do make it, the, the distance that ball's travelled, it doesn't it doesn't disrupt the team. It doesn't yeah. get you. Okay. It doesn't get Robinson in a one v one situation because you no. just adjust. It's yeah. floated so much. So the frustration for me, ultimately, in terms of how they were set up Luxembourg to begin with, which was was a four and that that tight midfield five or whatever. But the distance between those two units was so tight that it was very difficult to play ten balls as such. But also, Joe, that Luxembourg defence was so, was was pressed quite high that I was thinking at times, just turn them, just leave a lovely little ball in there. It makes them drop, it makes them rethink it. And certainly, when you from Robbie Brady come on in that second half, do you remember that run he made from the heart of midfield yeah, first thing. through the heart of their defence? And suddenly they went, whoa, drop back. And yes. it's moments like that, that understanding that's got to come, that's saying, well, listen, make the run, give yourself up. They'll drop. We'll then create space in the ten, and we're just a bit. Well, not a bit. We're just we're just predictable at that stage, and it's so frustrating. I mean, when I when I knew I was coming on today, after I was hoping I was going to be talking positively. We're building. We're 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 slowly but surely going down the right track, and then suddenly that performance. Wow. And how damaging do you think this is, then, Gary? You know, for instance. If I was to give you a sense of the Irish papers here in the main, they're saying things like, you know, huge scrutiny now and Stephen Kenny and big pressure. And I mean, most uh, like Kevin Kilban and David Myler said, is you really can't judge an international manager until he's had two campaigns. And you've got to be fair to Stephen Kenny. Paul McGrath is in the Sunday World. He's saying time for Kenny to go now, which I think is far more premature than any anybody would say. But but how damaging then this defeat to Kenny and his tenure, do you think? I think it is damaging, but I, I I agree kind of with the lads as such. You know, we've got to see this through. We've committed to it. We've got to see it through. Um, I don't think there should be any real, like, um, massive decision right now. But as we identify going into this game, Joe, and I know we've got the friendly, but it, it's, it's the length of time between the next competitive games that they'll have to stew on this. And this is a result now that... For all the talk of that, we played well in, and, and and we hear so much of it to be perfectly honest, don't we? In terms of because of the, because the run's been that bad, we hear a lot of references back to Slovakia. We played really well in that, we lost. Played really well at times against Serbia, yeah, we lost. And and I'm not about just results. I, I, I promise you, I'm not. But ultimately, you're there to get results. And now everyone's talking about he has to have time now. There's that old saying in football, isn't there? You need time to be successful. Well, the reality is you need to be successful to be given time. Yeah. And, and that's the biggest concern for me. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm clutching at straws and being pedantic by saying we lost on penalties in Slovakia, but it doesn't make it any yeah, yeah, much better. Yeah. But, you know, uh, like you need maybe you need some luck as well to just of course you do. change you fortune absolutely. and get momentum. You, you, you've, yeah. I'm sure you've been, Gary, at, in teams. I mean, the Irish rugby team seem to be stuck in this in the Six Nations even where... The players are promising you that things are going well behind the scenes, as, yeah. as 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 is happening under Stephen Kenny, and yet there's no evidence of it on the pitch, and people are really starting to lose faith, and then it just turns and it happens, and suddenly whatever that gap is between training ground and pitch is closed, and things go from there. And, and the Irish rugby team kind of got over that hump. Yeah, we're that's what we're kind of hoping for here at the moment, but it's it's definitely based more on hope than evidence at the moment. Yeah, certainly. I mean, I I in the build up to this the game last night. I, I likewise would have said, like, the players are talking about confidence and, in, and from the outside looking in, you're saying, well, listen, it's difficult to, to say you're being confident when you're on this winless run. Mm. But I have I've said this, you feel within that group, even though the results don't probably back it up, that you feel you're on the cusp of something. And I mm. believe them. I, gen- I do believe that they felt, yeah, we're about to have something. But these type of results make it very difficult and we'll, and we'll, we'll really chisel away at that confidence. Of course it will. And, and listen, there are there are mitigating circumstances in terms of what's had to be faced in the pandemic or the players that are missing. But there are still um, 
developments that have happened that will be asked questions of Kenny. Of course, they will. The staff situation, you know, they may well be out and say, listen, it was just, no, we're going on. But that isn't that wasn't great, was it? The fact that the, the ideal way of playing initially was thrown out of, out of the way in terms of playing with one hold in two advance because he suddenly realised, no, we can't do it. Then we've gone to a back five. So it's not as if the, the philosophy that he'll have built up over those two years with the under-21s, and everyone's talking about give him time and give him back in, and, and I believe that, I mm. do believe that. But there is a counter-argument, Joe, to say how much more backing... I, I don't think anyone can be accused of not backing him because of the fact I can't remember, and this is... I generally don't believe a manager of Ireland has had the support that he's had across the board in terms of the players wanting him, uh, the media, the supporters... Everyone was desperate for Stephen to do well. He was given a job with two years to really look at the situation, to work with the next group of players under 21, which is unprecedented as such, because you may say yeah, under 21 managers do get the job, but he got the senior job before he'd even kicked the ball with the under 21s. Mm -hmm. So you give him that, this windless run, the staff situation, you know, it's difficult It's difficult to say we have not backed him. And then everyone's saying, well, yeah. listen, you've got to back him, you've got to write this competition off, this World Cup. Before we'd even lost the game, you're thinking, and I just, I, I find that difficult to, to agree with. No, I understand. Could you argue, though, in defence of Kenny, and look, it's a hard morning to be arguing too strongly in, in, in defence yeah. of what's going on, because you argue things like the change uh, to two holding midfielders and then the change to three slash five at the back, depending, uh, that that's actually just a sign of... Uh, flexibility and yeah, you yeah, know that's a positive does, yeah. and, and actually his core his core philosophy hasn't actually changed at all that the oh, yeah. you know in they're just of, details yeah he said about that the team had to be tactically flexible um, and the build up to this game and, and and of course you have to be because the idealistic views that you have in the classroom in coaching courses the reality is very different yeah. and the reality Joe is so different from under 21 football to senior football the jump is massive now there was a period there where, because of how brilliantly Stephen was doing with the under-21s, and then, um, and then people were saying, "And look at Mick, he's struggling. He's got sacked in Cyprus." Now, I didn't feel that that was fair on Mick, and likewise, I don't think it's fair on Stephen that people now are saying, "Well, look what Mick's done at Cardiff." There are a suggestion that there's an agenda. I, I don't think there's an agenda as such. Well, I hope there isn't, but there's certainly preferences amongst the supporters and in, on who they wanted the manager to be. And when they have every indifferent result or loss like last night, it, it does it does it does cause you a, a massive amount of pressure. Yeah, I think those people who want him to fail are just a very loud minority, and I don't actually know what they want. Genuinely, I don't know yeah. what they want. What do they want to go back to? Who do they want to get in? I mean, we can go and get Neil Lennon and do whatever. I mean, can I get your sense, David, from being in the, sta the stadium? Because I suspect you're watching more of the Jason Knights and the Josh Cullens and the Alan Browns than certainly I am. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm mainly seeing them for Ireland because, you know, I just can't watch everything. So last night, I probably like Gary, I'm typing notes away here and the sloppiness, for instance, like yeah. uh, where just I... Just sorry, Joe, just yeah, sorry, just cut across. No, just because of it, I just had to clarify because there was a mix-up with my accreditation uh, with a late application. Sorry, you didn't COVID, get in. Cause, so yeah, because of COVID restrictions, then the press box was obviously very uh, reduced. So I actually didn't get in. So I was well, walking from home like a lot of other people last night. Well, that that, um, that is a disgrace. Snade should be first on the on the list. Well, not when you apply late. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, on on well, the no, sloppiness though, because yeah. it's, it's the same question really applies. Because I mentioned it to, to Kevin, David earlier on. Their keeper puts the ball out of play. These are small moments, right? But I just want to get your sense of whether this is out of character for these players or if actually we're, we have to have a reality check about what, what's possible for these players. Tenth minute, their keeper boots the ball out of play very close to their own goal and you think, oh, brilliant, Ireland have pressed them, we're away here. Yeah. Ball is thrown to Alan Brown and he just first touches it back out of play. You know, you lose yeah, all that momentum. Uh, Kieran yeah. Clark, Gary referenced, three minutes later, ball just passed out of play under very little pressure it's a 15 yard pass along the ground uh, 45th minute left hand side Ireland are on the break James Collins has it and little outside of the yeah. foot dreadful pass all that momentum gone uh, 58th minute Brown has James Collins on an overlap I'm not picking on those two players by the way it's just these were the ones that caught my eye Brown has James Collins outside him it's a 2v1 58 minute and defender intercepts it 63rd minute Jason Knight so sloppy pass to Coleman ends up going behind Coleman Ireland get pressed it's back to a, you know an Ireland kick out and these moments are littered throughout the match these are just ones I happen to jot down they're throughout the match now 
Is this bad night at the office? Is this like confidence seeping out of the players so they're getting jittery? Is this pressure or or like after at a certain point if you keep making these silly mistakes then that's just your ceiling as a player and we have to be real about that. But there was also a moment, I think it was a combination of all those things in terms of the game um, where the confidence was drained from the players but there was also a moment in the first half, I can't remember when it was but when Enda Stevens just had a very kind of just lax of days ago and kind of flick of the left boot and the ball went out of play and like, that was very, very unlike him. It did just seem, and I mentioned it earlier, it did just seem is that when Ireland didn't make that early breakthrough that the confidence was drained and Luxembourg just had a bit more, actually had a bit more smartness about them as a team, as a unit of how to of how to deal with it in terms of in terms of the the, the players if you, if you if you look at if you look at that still look at that team like there's like, there's like there's championship players in there and there's young players in there and there's a like there's not a core there of lads who are in the real prime of their career you're talking mid twenties kind of playing at a really top level it's kind of like a mishmash of of fellas coming through like kind of like the like James Collins who for all for all the will in the world mm. he is ex- he is extremely limited he's he's at Luton Town he's he gets brought in and you, you see his limit you see you do see his limitations you have Seamus Coleman at the back alongside Dara O'Shea who's making his way in the, excuse me who's making his way in the uh, in the game you've got Kieran Clark who's who, who's coming back into into the into the into the fold like obviously Gavin Bazunu in goal making his making his senior debut you have like Jason Knight who, by all accounts, speak to people in the in the game mm. who has such a great uh, attitude and application about him, and they feel he can go really far. But he's still just still making making his way in the game, and it hasn't has not played at the very very top level. Then, like, it just it just it just seems to be like a mishmash of of what's there. If you look at the car, you kind of Gary mentioned it earlier about the under twenty ones. If you go through that team, like you're talking like Troy Parry, Aaron Connolly, Adam Eade, Jason Malumbi, that was seen to be that's who the hope seemed to be that these lads would have really big seasons over the last couple of years and mm. really kick on in their careers. And like football's football is rootless and it can chew you up and it can spit you out and things never just go never go straight to straight to plan. And it's just it just hasn't happened yet. It just hasn't like the there's so many young, there are so many young players in, in around that squad. Now that doesn't necessarily mean, oh well, there's young players there, so that means everything's going to be great in five, six years because you never know where these lads are going to be. Like, they have to do it for themselves in their career, and they have to really kick on. And it's what's lacking really is throughout that team is like you're talking about fellas. I was trying to, I was trying to look at them like. In that in that team, like you're talking like in their twenties, mid twenties, 25, 26, yeah. 27. How many of those lads are in the Premier League? You're probably looking like, like John Egan will come back into the team, obviously, but he's probably oh, well, he is. He's gonna get he's gonna get relegated. Callum Robinson at West Brom, who who started last night, like he he's gonna be gone. There's no lads in that team who who are kind of I know I'm going back in the twenties again, but like who you are thinking, do you know what? These are these are in that prime. These fellas now are really gonna be are, yeah, yeah. are really gonna be are gonna be kicking on, and that's why I think if if in terms of this like project with Kenny, that's because that's why there was so much enthusiasm for him with the job. And it, it could have been him or anyone because he was coming in with this enthusiasm and a bit of positivity and trying to get across a message that had been lost in Irish football a little bit. Now you can do that and say that, but what he's needed to do to kind of improve his own standing and be able to just work a little bit. Made this piece, uh, made this point in the in the piece of the Irish Examiner to almost like work in peace and give himself that little bit of credibility and stability in the job was to have shown by now that there, there will be that progression and I, I do think I do think there will be I don't as it's clear now it's not just it's not just going to be straight up and everything's going to everything's going to be kind of going from from a a to b and it's going to be it's going to be great there's going to be these serious bumps in the road this is a massive massive one now for for him in terms of the, the scrutiny he's going to be under and the criticism he's going to face. Now that's up until this point. Now it's going to be a case of some really bad results. That result, obviously, last night was was appalling. The the, the performance was appalling. It was nowhere near what where Stephen Kenny needs to be getting the near needs to be getting this Ireland team. And that's what he has to do next. Now is keep the players who have bought into what he's done. Keep those players believing in what he's doing it is the right way. And as what Gary was saying is that. That they still do feel as if they are on the cusp of something, because 
even though obviously, listen, could be maybe unprofessional of me to be getting as as maybe frustrated and angry because of what I've seen and how I've seen things being operated. But that's now it's only now going to be on the pitch how how Stephen Kenny can keep the show on the road for himself. That is just a fact. Yeah, I think we're all passionate, aren't we, in terms of the Irish team? I don't think it's rational thinking at times. Mm. But certainly, Joe, going back to you were just saying about Knight and Cullen and giving the ball away, I've seen a lot of um, Josh Cullen playing for Charlton when he was on loan there and lovely footballer continuity. So I was always thinking, oh, come on, I want to see you get your chance for Ireland. Mm. Likewise with Knight, um, I covered Derby in the FA Cup this season, so I had to watch a lot of their games and really, really proud of how he plays. Tenacious, covers the ground, great attitude, Knight. And I think, what, if I, if I may, I think a lot of players will tell you that it probably takes about 15, 20 caps yeah. before you feel really comfortable within your surroundings. Mm. And that, 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 you might be, that, that might be someone who's, who's regularly playing in a premiership as well, to then so, suddenly play the, um, for international football with the pressure that's associated with it, the, the pride you have in playing and, and the responsibility that you have. But I think certainly something that some of this group of players have to learn is how they cope within those pressure moments. I think late on in games, certainly against Serbia, I don't think they managed the game particularly well. And, and what I mean by that is not just... It's just an understanding of where, listen, you are fatiguing, you are getting tired, so get yourself in a good position, recover, just yeah. look around at your teammates, just adjust people all around you. And I think what, what made me think about people saying about, write this campaign off and let's go again in four years' time, I, I was the opposite. I was like, no, listen in the back of your mind after two defeats, you might well be saying that. But in the players' minds, they have to know and be able to cope with the pressure of playing for Ireland when, if you lose matches, it costs you a major finals. Don't say to them, listen, wait, it don't really matter for this one. We'll concentrate for the next one because they'll never learn how to cope in those last 15 minutes then. That's the problem. That's where you win and lose. That's the fine line between qualifying for major championships is whether or not in those hard moments you're still difficult to play through. You still impact on the opposition. And that's what these players need to learn. So the, the, the optimistic view of last night in particular, and maybe this campaign, is that there is enough in the likes of Cullen and Knight, and you've seen it, and these are just difficult growing pains. They're going to have to go through a night like this and learn yeah. from it very quickly. And therefore, let's not throw the baby out with the bat water. No, no, of course. And I, I do think they have the, the ability. And I've always said this about these Irish players, um, even in Martin O'Neill's time. I do think they're capable of so much more, certainly with... Um, the, the manager before the Italian. What's his name? I can't remember it. Oh, my God. Trapattoni. Trapattoni, God. That shows you. <laughs> that so often he was saying, these players are not good enough, not good enough. And we hear it, and it drives me mad because perhaps they're not playing at Premier League clubs, it's, but even the skill set yeah. of all Irish men, women, children, in terms of the national sports, how skilled they are to be playing the hurling, the Gaelic, rugby, boxing, all those things... We're an incredible sporting nation. So don't listen to people saying that. Have that belief. These players are playing for Ireland at elite level. Sure. They must be able to play it's, football. It's what made some of the basics last night so frustrating, isn't it, though? Yeah, I mean, it is. Like, that, you, that you, is it. I often think of like the best, the best players I played with growing up as a kid, because we can all relate to that, and the best yeah. players in the year were phenomenal. <laughs> yeah. And they weren't within an ass's roar of professional <laughs> football. So can you imagine yeah. how good the guys are that make it? Do you know what I mean? And then you have the mistakes that you see last night, the sloppiness, and you're kind of thinking, it just doesn't add up. It just doesn't. Yeah. And, and you know, on the youth point, you know, you, uh, David makes very fair points about youth. And it's funny, I was like, even last night, I was thinking, God, you know, that uh, Vincent Thiel, that is, is really good. You know, he looks about 25, 26, peak of his powers. And then you find out he's... 21 years of age you know he was yeah. he was really good for them or even mm. Vlahovic the other evening for Serbia he's the same age as Aaron Connolly and, you, and, that, and that, that's where you kind of stop and worry and you think Gary oh is this generation we're really pinning our hopes on I mean have we, have, we, football, isn't it? have we overestimated them if we're being frank like I, I really don't feel Stephen Kenny has a, a great hand to pick from at the moment it's just the brutal truth well, it was a huge pressure to put on those under-21 players a year ago saying that they're going to be the new generation yeah. because, they're, they're like you said, from under-21s to senior international football, there's so many, like, there's a journey that they have to go on, that they have to get regular games at their club. And I know the Irish team's not picked on uh, club form, but at the same time, how's Malumbi's development going to be served when he can't even get in his league club team? That's the frustration. He's going on loan to Preston. He's not playing enough games. And yeah. 
And the flip side of that is, look at Knight playing so often for Derby now that he's become a key man at such a young age. Captain, I mean, captain. Wore yeah. on the captain's armband. So, listen, it just shows you that this is a journey for these players and we need to support them. Mm. Uh, what about Stephen Kenny, David? Were you plugged into the press conference afterwards? We played some of what yeah. he had to say at the start. His uh, demeanour on TV, obviously, just incredibly disappointed. I got the sense he was just even though there were a few mitigating circumstances between COVID and injuries and then those players who aren't fit enough maybe to play two 90 minutes in the space of three days. I, my overall sense was he was just at pains to, I can't make excuses for this. I'm not going to make excuses for this. I thought, you know, he handled that interview as well as you probably can. Yeah, like, oh, come here, like it would have been silly in the extreme to come out and try and make kind of excuses or try to put any kind of positive on that because, like, there really was none. It, can I go back? I just think, I think he was maybe in a bit of, a bit of shock almost just in terms yeah. of, of just the level of the, just the just the performance and just how, and how poor it was and I think that's I genuinely think that's what took a lot of people back because you're kind of thinking after Serbia and it's maybe it's it's just a sign of, of how, how long it will take maybe if you're if this is the way we're going to go with, with how we're changing where like it's bits and bobs it's like spells and games here and there that's really what we're clinging, clinging to I know obviously it was against Slovakia in the playoff, that was a, a, a really solid performance. And at times against Serbia, like, like it was, but like, it, it's just, you just, you're just looking at that team and at times against Serbia, I thought the midfield functioned really well together in terms of, like had that blend of say Cullen, who kind of was a bit more, kind of just almost reserved a little bit. You kind of like, sat and then you had the energy of Malumbi and then you had the kind of maybe the forward thinking a bit more of Brown and it and it did seem it did seem to work. But then I've mentioned those players and you're talking about Alan Brown who's playing playing with Preston and you're talking about Malumbi who's obviously on, on loan at Preston from Brighton and uh, and um and Josh Cullen who's 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 gone to Anderlecht to try and, and try and get regular games. Like it's it's gonna be the nature as well where like these lads, even though obviously they're internationals for Ireland, like the nature of where they are, they're, they're still going to be inconsistent. It's trying to get that consistency. Yeah. And like, like Gary will, like, I actually, we interested in what so in terms of with, with Gary, in terms of how it was, but like, I don't think you can so much in international football say, well, oh, well, there's loads of injuries and COVID, I think, can be used, can, should, should be, has to be in the conversation for obviously four, say, nine games or so. But I think as an international manager as well, like, Injuries. I don't think you can ever look at your team and say, "Well, oh, no, I didn't have the full team, so that's that's the excuse." Like, they're gonna, there's always going to be players out of form. There's always going to always going to be injuries. I think the sign of 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 a manager who gets a grips with a squad is having the, the structure in place and having that those foundations in place where maybe like you can you can deal with that a little bit because you're like international football. You are never going to have everyone for and all cylinders and. Like Gary will know. Like, he, listen, like he, he's the expert here. He'll know what 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 is needed when fellas come into camp and and how you can get the best out and when maybe things aren't going well from our club level. Well, listen, I, I I've said this so many times. We've we've had many players, and Joe, you, you referenced McAteer getting that famous goal against Holland, having difficulties with his club form or whatever. And we've all experienced it up to up to uh, my record goal scorer Robbie Keane wouldn't have been playing for clubs at certain times. Mm. But you come, you come back in to within that group where you have an understanding of what's expected of you. You feel better about it, and and these players, when they come with Ireland now, that's why it's so crucial for their this squad's development that they got that elusive first win last night, and that's why it is so disappointing now that they didn't get that, and and that kind of kind of, kind of goes on longer now in competitive games, but. There was a positive. I thought Bazunu was so impressive in goal. He really was. And just listening to him <laughs> in his post-match interview afterwards, what an impressive young man he mm. was in terms mm. of he hit the nail on the head. Yeah, I'm delighted about it, but the performance, we weren't quite there, blah, blah, blah. And I just thought, yes. And we, so we have got some talented players coming forward. We, we genuinely have. But it is, it's, it's a pressure time because... I remember being part as a young player coming into Mick McCarthy's team when he was taking over from the famous Jack Tolton era in terms of introducing us young players, myself, Kev Gilban, many others, and us having to prove that we're able to play at that level. And that's the challenge. That is the challenge because I've said it so many times. It is the greatest honour playing for Ireland. It really is. But it comes with a huge responsibility. You have to perform. Mm -hmm. But yeah. One of the things, points I would make as well... I think it is important. I don't think, I don't think anyone, anyone in, in like maybe obviously be different for the players. The players will maybe have that belief. But going into a World Cup qualifying campaign, I don't think any fan or, or journalist would think, you know what, we should be qualifying here. Like it's, it's just something that 
like we've we've qualified for for one in 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 twenty years. What what you want to see, and especially now when you've got a manager who's come in and has spoken so positively, is you just want to see a progression, and you you want to see that there is like development, and you got a sense of that in the Serbia game that you're like, yeah, okay, but then. You, this feels like so many, so many steps backwards, and that's what what's going to be important next is, even for the for the players, but even for the manager is 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 getting through it. Like the the Qatar friendly, like it's kind of looking forward to the game. You're saying, almost almost dreading that game. Yeah, now. it's like a no win scenario. It's a no win scenario. But yeah, David, it, why it, why are you saying we can't? You didn't think we're not going to qualify? I, I don't understand not, it. Why? Why no, weren't we going to qualify at the beginning? Serbia had just been beaten by Scotland. You know, I know like they've got some yeah. fantastically gifted players, but as a collective, they struggle. You know where some of our players are elevated by pulling on the national jersey? Serbia have really struggled with that pressure, bearing in mind the, the level they play at club. And also the disconnect between them and their supporters, the new manager, they just lost to Scotland. They were there for the taking. So I, 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 don't, I, I promise you, it's not my, my heart ruling my head. I, I think we could have qualified or I think we could have challenged oh, for that second God. place I don't know I, I think 3-2 really flattered us the other night I thought oh Serbia, it did in the game yeah. Serbia oh, different certainly. level different level no I, I think it did flatten um, flatter us towards the end Joe because I mean even Stephen Kenny saying he can only remember three chances well oh. I, I could remember about six or seven <laughs> yeah so. easy, but, easy. But, but he said that Joe right after the game sure. he got watched back and, and, and it's just how you felt the game went but I, 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 prior to the game I'm thinking get a positive result there yeah, I, I wasn't right enough the competition. Why would I? We are now, unfortunately, is is where we are. Um, a few texts in. Uh, manager is the right idea in terms of trying to play the game, passing, keeping holding the ball. The squad, unfortunately, lack quality in every department, don't have the skills to play the way the manager wants. Trapattoni, McCarthy, O'Neill played a game to make Ireland hard to beat primarily over the last 10 years. No manager is going to change the culture of our international team in 10 games. Calling for the manager to go already is unfair he needs time to implement his ideas game plan that will take years to transform Ireland's football philosophy says Colin Barry says reality check is right nobody's saying we have the quality to beat a team like Luxembourg because we don't well we surely do to beat Luxembourg uh, Kiki says we've completely lost our identity we haven't done the groundwork at underage level to be in a position to play ticky tacky football I say, I, that goes back to your point Gary doesn't it that it's it's oh, it's a black or white all or nothing it's either ticky tacky or it's don't yeah, even pass I, the ball I, and, don't, I just yeah. don't understand why it has to be the extremes why can't we be competitive play on the front foot in, in, in keeping with how our national sports are and play technically good football it's not that difficult to keep the ball unopposed and yet mm. Unfortunately, last night we did struggle with it. But I, I, I don't understand, Joe. I generally don't. I, I remember seeing you guys talking the other night about how everyone's having a go at the, off the ball, lads, saying, oh, you're just disciples of Kenny. But I couldn't understand that the reference was just like, well, listen, if if Kenny was to go, we've got to revert back to that. Why? And, and, and playing that from the back is not just a patent of Stephen Kenny. I generally believe every manager does it now. Luxembourg the way people are doing play it. Luxembourg. Exactly. Yeah. It's as if we think like it's the only way to play and Kenny's the only oh, no. way he does it. But it's also this whole thing of that it's like tiki tacky. Like playing out from the back is not tiki tacky. This is and this is a, like a bit of a myth. I don't think it's even a case of even with Stephen Kenny. Like if anyone who's seen it would have seen Stephen Kenny's teams play before that, like the amount of emphasis that he would put on set pieces and and say crosses into the box and playing quickly like this is he, like when he's come in he hasn't come in and said oh well i want us to pass the ball 700 times and 700 times in the game for, for the sake of it he's come in he, he wants to do he, he said it like he wants to do things quickly and he wants to play with that uh intensity but he wants to do it obviously maybe a little bit a little bit differently because that's if you look at oh, camera's gone again if you look at how the game the game is is in in world football if like you, you'll get it left behind you have like it has changed there's no way of you can't get away from that yeah. like and if you, you like ireland have already been left behind you mentioned there about kind of like youth structures and like the, the game in this country like one of the one of the you hear the phrase and especially when you're in when you you go over and you do bits and bobs in britain about it being an industry like it's not an industry here like you know what i mean like we we you have kids who, who leave home at, at 16 and you say right Go off you go there now, and if hopefully you make it, and then we'll we'll see you, and we'll and hopefully you'll you'll become a professional, and we'll and we'll call you in then and stuff like. Yeah. It's gradually it's had to change now, where in, in terms of those structures and having that link properly, but we're so far behind in terms of of that that like I just 
like I haven't got the qualifications to say exactly how it's going, how how you change it and how it's going to how it's going how it's going to change or how long it's going to change. It's just whether or not well, or we just have a top down international team where you win at all costs if you can and try and get to the odd tournament, get the few ball in because you need to keep things go, keep things ticking along, or do you actually sacrifice it a little bit and say well the investment if we can have that and this is going to be really difficult because. Like you look at the state the FAI are in financially, yeah. you have to you have to build. I know it's an old argument, and yeah. you could hear from her two hours talking about it. But like you can't, do, I don't think the League of Ireland can be ignored anymore. It really can't. Yeah, 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 well, the structures in this league can't be point. ignored anymore yeah. because it's just it's happened for too long. And unless it does something does change drastically like that, and something longer term is put in place, yeah. we'll be having this conversation with a different manager in ten years time. Probably. Sorry, sorry. We, sadly, we don't have two hours. I don't even have two seconds. We're right out of time. But thank you so much, both of you, David Snade, journalist. Thanks a million, David and Gary Breen. Oh, thanks well so much as ever. Cheers, fellas. Thanks, lads. Take Good care. luck. Cheers, uh, David Snade and Gary Breen with us there. Uh, don't forget on uh, next week's Paddy Power Half Hour, we're continuing with our new segment Near Miss, which is aimed at allowing you to reclaim a losing bet. If you've had a single bet or an accumulator that has let you down, take a screen grab, include your bet slip ID and send it into us either using the hashtag PP Near Miss on Twitter, a DM on Instagram, or you can WhatsApp 0879181800. And we'll announce the selected winners every Friday at the end of the Paddy Power Half Hour. You can see all the T's and C's at otbsports.com and stay tuned to OTB social channels for more. Football on Off the Ball is with thanks to Paddy Power. For information on responsible gambling, visit gamblingcare.ie. Football on Off the Ball with Paddy Power. Everything would be better if Wes was back in the team. Gamble responsibly, gamblingcare.ie.